Hello, everyone. So, as per the redemption last night, I'm going to be ranting about how PBs are a super overrated aspect of Cubane and why I think they can be potentially, like, actually pretty detrimental to progress and they can kind of, like, really mess up one's mentality around, around solving. Um, so to start off, for those who are somehow seeing this and don't know what a PB is, first of all, I don't know how you got here, welcome, but a PB is a personal best. Um, it is the best result you've ever gotten in a certain subset of things, so it could be your best 3x3 three three single, for instance. There you go. Um, so what does this represent, first of all? I think that's like a really fundamental thing to to um to discuss before we can really analyze this topic. Um what a PB represents is it, it's kind of a product of your peak performance in an event as well as your peak luck in an event. Obviously those two things might not match up and that's why I call it a product of those two things. But essentially, um, uh, a PB, whether it be a single, whether it be a mean of three, whether it be average of a hundred, even it is, um, it is how you performed near, like at, at the at the um, intersection of your peaks of skill and luck, is how I see it at least. And already we can kind of poke a pretty big hole in the importance of a pb or i guess kind of like why like ranking people's pbs would not rank the best solvers um just the fact that luck is a big element of uh, of a pb you know and especially this is why for example uh it, it's very obvious when you look at singles and it's like oh yeah this person just got a last layer skip and it was like 26 moves but um this also affects, uh, for example, AO50s, AO100s, and even to a greater degree, uh, your skill fluctuates day to day. And not even day to day, but like hour to hour, you get more fatigued as you do more solves in a day. You'll be unfocused if you're dehydrated. There's so many factors that go into your performance, and it's, it's very, very feasible for someone to, for example, get a 5.6 average of 100 and then decline in skill to a degree where their best best AO 100 that they're able to perform you know at, at, at the current day would be only 5.8 or something like obviously that's still very fast but at the same time this is why pbs are fundamentally flawed because it's a measure of peak skill um, if, if we're taking out the luck factors, it's a measure of your peak skill. And that is really problematic because people, a lot of people seem to be under the impression that cubing is just kind of a steady, steady incline. Like you just keep getting better day by day, but no, it, it really, it, it fluctuates very frequently and it's, it's incredibly normal to be like to be you know to from one day to the next become you know point one, point two, even point five worse um let me turn on this fan um if that makes sense also by the way uh chat you can fully you know add to the conversation this isn't supposed to just be a one-man show um but yeah progress yeah, it's like it's like any skill. Progress is not linear, and there are going to be some breakthrough moments and some moments of stagnation and even just decline. And uh, I'm gonna relate this to kind of my own situation real quick. Uh, some of you may know that I don't share my PBs at all, and I I really dislike it when people ask about my PBs. And the reason for this is that PBs are really, really highly valued in the Cuban community for some reason. But it's just not 
a very good measure of how of how one will perform and it creates an expectation that is oftentimes just not reasonable for one to get so i'm not going to reveal my pbs but to give a quick perspective on it my best four blind solve that people know about is 5415 which is on my youtube channel quick plug shame shameless plug um and but does that mean that i should be expected to get you know a 54 every single session absolutely the fuck not like first of all just it's a single and it's very easy to see this for most people but because it's a single luck played a huge factor into that like it's a good scramble and not only was it was a, a great scramble that i got for that but i executed it with with great top tier performance um it, it's that combination of these two factors that also made my uh mean of three and ao5 pbs for four blind as well and that's why i'll never reveal those either um i'm not going to tell you what my actual pbs are uh for that reason if that makes sense you know it's and, and same goes for other events and um i know of three blinders who back a few years ago got some incredibly lucky singles and really really wanted to keep it on the down low for the same reason because it it creates these really really devastating expectations from other people um and it, it it's really really it really sucks as a solver um if my thoughts are like incomplete please tell me i'm i this is very impromptu um do i think let's just so i don't think this applies to speed runs for the reason that in the vast majority of speed games it's about farming for a single um like speed running in general is about farming for a fast single and i think for that reason it's like it's like pb's much more closely correlate to skill but still not exactly uh because but like i think that is that can often be demonstrated through um through close calls to a new pb or uh just aptitude to perform well in races um and okay yeah gil that's also a topic i forgot i wanted to talk about and I think in general, it's actually healthier uh, in terms of mentality to not keep track of one's PBs. Um, because a lot of times, as like we've discussed already, how progress isn't linear in cubing. And I think keeping track of PBs often takes away from those moments where you might improve from your previous day of solving but it'll just be like your second best result ever. I think it really takes away from those moments that are really key to improving in general. Um, and I know, and, and that's not to say that like people are never happy about like just missing a PB, like people can still be happy about just generally fast results. And I, I see people are happy about it a lot, but I think, I think keeping track of PBs um, is, it's really it, it it really creates this kind of negative framework in which you're not appreciating your own skill and improvement you know yeah um and yeah daniel carnock and i also do this as well uh keep track of pbs by algorithm so for learning a large alg set a technique that we use that uh, that Daniel kind of invented was keeping track of like your best solve using like using like each specific PBL. And I don't think that's keeping track of PBs in the same way. Like I do think it's healthier because it kind of um, reduces the luck element, especially when you're using like PBL or something. But the reason I think that's that's a good way to do things is because it's not about it, it's not really about getting fast solves. It's not about beating your PB. It's about 
it's it it's really really what keeping track of those PBs does is it pressure it, it at least for me it just pressures me into recognizing faster it just actively improves my recognition time and it gives me a way to track that because for example i do it with zbll and i know t u and l so that gives me 216 different p different pbs which i can break at any time and i can see that as kind of like oh yeah i'm getting faster at recognizing these cases and I think that's a lot healthier than, for example, just having one, like, just overall PB. Like, I don't think it's keeping track of PBs in the same way, even. Like, the concept, is, the, the fundamental concept is kind of the same. But it is, it's really, really a very, very different, different process. It's a very different motive. Um... Uh, and yeah, um, do I only keep it a secret with cubers or all people? Um, I'll tell people who I'm very close with, like, people who I VC with, I'll, like, I'll, like, talk about my PBs with them occasionally, but, um, never to the wider public, it's only to people who I just, um, yeah, PBs that aren't calculated by results. Um, I think that can be interesting, but I also think to overall progress, because ultimately the fundamental goal of like, of like speed cubing, uh, speed cubing specifically is to get a fast time. And I think farming for high TPS solves just kind of takes away from other aspects of your solves and kind of breaks the habit of using look ahead and like just, it, it just... It just breaks really fundamental skills that you need in your solves. Um, the other part of it, and I know people kind of just have, like, just kind of disqualify this sort of thing in a soft way. But, for example, with PBTPS specifically, you can cheese that really easily by just doing, like, a sexy move spam at the end of your solve. Um, it, it's really, really easy to cheese TPS PB. Um, obviously people, you, you can force yourself to not do extraneous moves at the end of your solves, but either way, I just, it, like, it can be interesting, but I don't think it really means much. Um, all right. Yeah, I think this is kind of going to be a little bit of a shorter rant, but, um, does anyone else have anything to talk about with this? Because I feel like I kind of covered a lot of, like, what I think about PBs in general. Um, I don't know. That's true, Gil. Um, the thing with when you're just starting out is that you haven't had in well in, in the vast majority of situations you just haven't really had the time to let luck play into it um um i think large scale pbs just they definitely don't present the same problems as shorter term PBs, but um, I think they're just kind of meaningless because day-to-day -day fluctuation is really, really huge. And it kind of just, large scale PBs kind of really ignore that fact. Um, and I think AO1000 really just means very little for that reason. If we're just talking about like a straight up measure of skill, then I think yeah, it can it can kind of be a more useful metric to compare solvers. But I stopped believing in the long session a while ago. Just because I think it's very important to track your day-to-day -day fluctuations because that's 
a really necessary thing to be able to counter for good competition performance because with competitions you only have like one day to do the solves and um you can't just like sleep it off and just try the next day and see if you're faster that day Creates peer pressure to have a good interest good slash interesting PB. Yeah, a two. Uh refer to what I was just saying, Tygon. Um when you're just starting out, it's definitely like it's it's definitely a lot. It doesn't present the same problems because you haven't had time to get really good luck in your solves, which is in the long term what like like pretty much half of the PB equation. Thoughts on how to establish an objective statistic that gives an objective level of skill in a certain event and leads to an accurate expectation. Um, yeah, uh, the thing with that is that I don't think, I don't think you can create a statistic like that that is an equation of your times in any way. I, I just do not think that is at all possible in any way. Um... There are too many factors that play into your times. Um, and not even just like, like this is kind of a really specific instance of it, but I thought I'd bring it up. Um, because uh, I think it, I, I think a lot of people don't realize the impact of, of your environmental, uh, of like the environmental factors around your times. But Graham Siggins has this multi-blind tracker sheet where he um, essentially just he he not only tracks his like PB or uh, his his results and what went on in them, but stuff like what he ate the night of what he ate the day of, how much he slept the night before, his exercise and stuff, and these kind of factors had huge correlations into making his attempts better. Um, and, and, and they're really, really big. Um, and I think for multi-blind, it's kind of an, kind of an extreme example because the event's an hour long, uh, and you need to have constant focus. A factor like sleep will play much more into that than like, um, an eight second three by three solve. But, um, the, the point stands and going back to the creation of an objective statistic, I think the... The uh, best attempt I've seen at it so far is laser ranks. Um, Philip was in 2018 uh, creating a system of essentially like ranking competitors by their ELO from WCA competitions. Not exactly sure how it worked beyond that because competitions are not two people, they're not 1v1. But, um, I, I do remember it being quite a good predictor of of, um, of results. Um, it was actually it was actually um, pretty interesting to see. I'm not sure if that project is still ongoing at all, but um, that that's a thing. Yeah, that too, Gil. Um, latest day of one hundred is also a thing. I think. I think if we're talking about like creating an objective ranking, it fluctuates a little bit too much for that. But I think that's all. But I think if you're if you're trying to just give people a result to like generalize your skill, I do think that's way better than the PB. I agree. Um, latest day one hundred is definitely better for that. That's that's also a good thing to bring up for sure. All right, well, anything else to bring up? Um, all right, see you, Sasha.